Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. We're starting episode 4 of City of Kings. Now there's two things that I want to make mention of before we jump back into the playthrough. First of all, our boss has their own mini stand. And not a mini, but a standee. So Hakia will be right here and looks a little bit cooler because she has an actual standee. Second, when I had Thralir in the City of Kings, I moved him out and then healed himself for one action. He didn't need to do that. Anytime you go back to the City of Kings, you remove all impairments and you heal in full. So yeah, I didn't need to do that. I made a note, but I'm just letting you know in case you didn't see the note that I put up there. I'm realizing there's one other thing I want to talk about, and that is the boss activation. So normally you would think that we would activate the boss at the beginning of this round, because the boss just spawned due to the story quest. But according to a thread on BGG that Frank himself responded to, the time when you spawn a boss, you actually get to wait one round before activating them. So although I normally would activate Hakia right now before Thralir's first turn, we're not going to do that because of this thread. I'll make sure to put a link for the thread down below and you guys can check it out. It seems a little weird to me, but I, I guess I understand that in later stories, it might one shot all the heroes if all the heroes are in the same spot and there's like an attack all that would defeat all of them. And so I think that's what Frank's trying to prevent by doing this. So uh, for us, it's not going to matter a ton because Hakia isn't going to do anything because we're not in range, but we're just not even going to activate them at the beginning here. And I'd like to give SP3C1 the uh, shout out for that. He's the one who gave me that link and, and let me see that thread. So thank you very much for that. All right, let's get going. We've already resolved the story. Now we'll move the time tracker to the evening phase. For Thralir's turn, we're going to move him back to the City of Kings, and then he's going to buy that headgear, and we're going to have his Worker 1 move back to the City of Kings and drop off all of this glorious stuff. We'll move Thralir back here, and we'll move his Worker into the City of Kings. Our Worker is bringing in one wood, two fish, and three item parts. Nice. And then we'll pay two fish and two ore to be able to get the helm of Sir Prickles. We'll place this headgear right here. We'll increase his heal stat by one. He'll also increase his max health by one, which is awesome. His range can go up by one. We're still at two, but one more upgrade and we can go to three. And then his workers will have the max that you can for scavenge. We'll have our first worker go and generate another equipment item with the three item parts he just brought into the City of Kings. We'll use the three item parts we have here and draw our top card of the equipment deck. And we have the Brimstone Axe. Oh, this is for your arms. Ah, fortunately or unfortunately, we can't use this because nobody has upgraded any of their stats far enough to have an arm equipment. And we haven't found any linen. And look at all this linen we need. I think our last action is we're going to have Worker 2 take a couple steps out to start going to get ready to scavenge. We'll send Worker 2 all the way over here to Auslan's Way, right here with Sashara. Sashara's first action is going to be a little bit interesting. What we're going to do is have our Worker do some work in the Moon Lake. And what we're hoping to do is cause some attention. If we do, we're going to spawn another enemy and the reason, or creature. And the reason I want to do that is because then we can take out that creature, level up, and hopefully have enough health and attack to be able to take out that boss. <laughs> so we're going to try and spawn a not as difficult creature, take it out so we can take the boss out. Let's see if we can cause enough attention. The nice thing is we're rolling four of these dice. So it's likely. Yeah, there we go. We got two of them. So that means we'll spawn an enemy. And hey, we gained three fish. We'll place the three fish right here, and now let's go spawn our new creature. Now, the reason that I did this in the Moon Lake is because of this unquiet waters. Remember this from the first episode? If we take out and kill this creature, we gain an additional three experience. And let's see, this one will give us three experience to begin with. So we'll gain six experience for taking out the Slate Spitters. This creature, though, is going to have 15 health. So 10 and a five, that's kind of a lot. <laughs> Gonna have a green and a medium ability. Has retaliate two or reflect two. Heals two on its own. Does five points of damage. Wow, in a range of three. Let's draw our abilities. First, we'll grab from the green bag. 
give that a shake and draw one and we have temptation oh i don't know what that one does and then we'll grab the yellow medium bag and we'll give this one a shake come on give me a new one and we have chain lightning and move oh my goodness temptation states that all workers within range of the creature move one map tile towards the creature even if they're already trapped except for if they're in a pit Chain Lightning, I was thinking, sounded bad, and this is confirming it. Chain Lightning hits the creature's priority target and all other heroes on the same map tile as their priority target. We're playing two players, so that's four total damage. The amount of damage each hero receives is equal to the total damage divided by the number of heroes hit by the Chain Lightning. So that would mean each hero would get two damage if they were on the same tile. Oh. We will remove the three leftover attention tokens here and place... The Slate Rippers right here. These Slate Rippers may be tough, but I have a plan. I'm going to do a move and attack twice. I know that's going to hurt us kind of for a lot of damage, but what we can do is after that, do our special and heal ourselves. Our total movement is three, so we're going to do two steps here to end at the end of the Lost Hope. Because you never know when you want to draw a quest, right? <laughs> then what we're going to do is do two attacks each for four damage, we get to roll a luck die or a chance die to see if we can add to each one of those. So we're going to do four plus two, so that's six damage for our first hit, and four plus nothing. So six plus four is ten damage. Heck yeah. Ten damage is great, but don't forget, we're going to take four total points of damage because he'll reflect two points each time we attack him. We'll move from six health all the way down to two health. Sashara, though, has an ace up her sleeve. She has renew. Anytime, heal a hero in range for five. And that was a special action. So he'll, she'll heal herself for five. You can never go above max health. So five plus two is seven, but her max is six. Yeah. That will end this round. I think at the beginning of the next round, we'll just move Thralir over and take out the Slate Spitters with his five attack. Let's do it. To start the next round, there's no resolution of the story, so we'll simply move to midnight. And now what we do on each tile, we'll remove one attention token if there is one there. And of course, we lose one hope, but that's okay. We still have two times around the clock that we can go. All tiles that have an attention token will remove one. So we'll remove three of them. Nice. Now we would activate Hakia, but here's the thing. Hakia has nobody in range, and Hakia doesn't have any movement yet, so she'll just stay where she's at, and that's all we need to do. So now we can do Thrillier's turn. The first thing that we're going to do is a move action. We're going to move in range of the Slate Spitters, and then we're going to take them out. We'll move Thrillier over to the Inn of Lost Hope and do five points of damage, and these guys are toast! Even though Thrillier finished them off, he'll still lose two health because of their reflect. We're now going to get six XP, three from the unquiet waters and three from the creature itself. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're one away from another general upgrade, but we do get a skill upgrade for passing a level 11. In order to survive against this Hakia, I think we're going to have to go for some health upgrades. This will move our max health to eight and our current health to six. I think we're also going to do the same thing for Sashara. She'll move herself up to seven health. Nice. That means none of them can simply get one-shotted by Hakia. I am a little bit tempted by having that other upgrade. I only need one more XP. So I think I'm going to do an interact and draw a new quest. Let's see what we find. We get the Fallen Priest. A great priest has arrived at the City of Kings and plans to reorganize the temple. Will you help him? Option A, discard all the skill cards of the temple, then draw that many new cards and place them in the temple. Sure. Rewards gain one XP, one wood, one fish, and one ore. <laughs> yeah, I think I will do that. Option B would be discarding this and getting one XP. The, yeah, I, I don't care about them. I already have skill cards out. Let's definitely do option A. Here's our temple currently. Let's remove these four. And we'll draw four new ones. One, two, three. Whoa, double range. 
and four. Oh, wow. And this could really help workers get moving too. Cool. We'll grab one wood, one fish, and one ore. And the best part of all, one XP. And now we get another general upgrade. My plan is this, to have Thralir get in range of Akia and just soak some of that damage and attack for his five attack that he has. So I think I'm going to upgrade his health again so he gets to uh, nine max health, seven current health, and now he's only one away from being able to get arm uh, equipment as well. And then this way, Sashara will keep him healed up and he'll attack Akia. <laughs> I mean, that's my plan. We'll see if it works. With this, I think I'm going to upgrade Hakia's heal stat because that way she can use her special to heal Thralir by 5 and then use this to heal Thralir by 4 so she could always heal him totally up to his full health. I think that's pretty good. Thralir's last two actions are going to be about his worker. He's going to move worker number 2 and then have worker number 2 work. Let's have him go over to the Astrographer's Tower and let's do a little more scavenging. Let's give these four scavenging dice a roll. Oh, nice. Only one creature or attention token, one ore, one fish, and one wood. We'll place the goods in our worker's storage area, and only one attention token here in the astrographer's tower. Not bad. Something that I have not talked about yet are temporary structures. We can either build traps, camps, or barricades okay and we can do that with our workers in the city of kings if we use the certain amount of items that are requested here so this is showing eight ore or eight wood or eight fish traps are awesome because traps look at the level of our heroes and does that amount of damage to an enemy so i want to get eight ore so i can get a trap and hopefully set a trap for hikia that would be awesome I'm going to first have Sashara heal up Thralir to full health. Then she's going to have her worker number two do some work to gather some more ore. Thralir will now move to full health. Nice. Let's give our blue gather dice a roll. Whoa! One, two, three. Wow, that's... We're just getting a total of six ore. <laughs> we'll place all six ore here. Wow, that was an amazing gather. Then we're going to do a move action to move back, oops, wrong worker, to move back into the City of Kings and then do a work action to turn that into a trap. We'll move that worker back to the City of Kings. We're going to immediately drop off 6 ore. 6 plus 5 is 11. And then we're going to use 8 of the 11. So that means we'll have 3 remaining and we're going to create our trap. We'll place this temporary structure here in worker number two's storage area, and this is going to take up all six storage spaces, so no resources can be held by this worker until they drop off this trap, and that will take a work action to be able to drop this off somewhere. Our final action will be to move that worker number two one space. We'll move her back to the cog shed works. Now, right now, Hikia does not have a move action. But if Hakia gets a move action, we can drop that trap and hope that she maybe will walk over it and take a whopping, what, 12 points of damage? Yeah, that would be half of her health. <laughs> that would be awesome. And that is going to end this round. Now, for next round, I think the goal is to get both Thralir and Sashara into range and attack Hakia. We don't have to worry about Hakia attacking Sashara as long as Thralir is in range. That's because Thralir has a higher max health, and so that will always be considered the priority target. Let's see what we can do with Akia. Okay, are you ready for this? It's going to start getting bloody, I think. <laughs> Let's move to early morning. Akia will activate first, but once again, nobody's in range and doesn't have any special abilities yet except for Fury, so we're all set. Now let's move to Thralir. Thralir is going to move and do two attack actions. That's going to do a total of 10 points of damage. He'll move over to Moon Lake, and he has two range, so he'll be able to attack Hakia for a total of 10. The first attack of five will be reduced by two because of the armor. One, two, three. So only three points of damage. And then because of the fury, we're going to draw a green ability. And we have hounds. Wonderful. Okay. 
Now we're going to do another five points of damage. Minus two is three. So one, two, move this down to 10, and three. So we're now at 19 health, and we have to draw another green ability. And we have panic. Oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> And now we'll get we'll be hit for four points of damage due to this reflect. We'll go from nine health down to five health. Next, we'll have our worker do a work action and try and scavenge. And actually, I think that's our worker number two. I may have forgotten this last time. We get to roll five dice because our scavenging is totally upgraded. And we get lots of stuff. Okay, another attention token, but two more item tokens a fish, and a wood. We'll place the attention token here. We might need to start moving out of this area. We're kind of making a lot of noise. We obtained four different resources, but we can only carry three. So I decided to do the two item, uh, item parts and one wood. And now I think for our final action, we're going to move our worker number two. So we'll place it here, and we're going to start moving towards the City of Kings. We'll move ourselves back to the Hizdeki Caravans. For Sashara's turn, first thing we're going to do is our special and heal up Thrillier by five. That's going to put him back to full health. Gosh, I love that. Then we're going to move, and then we're going to do two attack actions. It's going to hurt us, but we need to do damage to Hakia. Having someone with a ton of healing is key in this game. We'll move ourselves into range right here, and let's do some attacking. Our first attack will be for four damage plus one for five. Our second one will be four damage plus nothing. So we're doing five and four points of damage respectively. Five minus two is three. One, two, three. And then we'll draw another green ability. Come on, be a move ability. Be a move. Nope, it's firebolt. Great. And then four minus two is just two. And we'll draw another one. <laughs> This is going to be just so much fun. Oh, we have a poison bolt. Great. We will also, of course, take four points of damage. One, two, three, four. So we're at three health due to that reflect. Man, that's going to really hurt us. Our final action will be to move worker to one space. We'll move her over to the Inn of Lost Hope. That will end this round. <laughs> and it went as good as can be expected, but now the pain comes. I hope you guys are ready for this. This is going to hurt. We'll now move to the late morning. Hakia now gets to activate, and the first thing is she will heal by two health. Now she's going to attack, and she'll attack her priority target. That's going to be the individual or hero that has the highest maximum health, which is Thrillier, and she's going to do six points of damage. This is when we say thanks to Sashara. <laughs> we'll go all the way down to three health. Now we're going to activate all the fun abilities that Hakia has. <laughs> First is Firebolt. We'll place one weak fire on the map tile of the creature priorities target is on. Fire tokens have a weak and a strong side, so we'll make sure to place it on the weak side. We'll place that here, right where Sashara and Thralir are. This is Colin from the not so distant future, and I'm gonna tell you now, I do both the fire and the poison incorrectly here in this part of the video. Both of those are supposed to activate immediately when they're placed on a tile with a hero. So both Sashara and Thralir should have taken one point of damage because of that weak fire. I will also be placing a poison token here and I won't activate that either, and that's incorrect. I should be activating the poison as well and placing it on our hero, hero sheets. You will notice that I realize this in the middle of the playthrough, and I'll do it correct for Hakia's next activation. And now back to the regular scheduled program. With Poison Bolt, we'll do the exact same thing. We'll place a weak poison token on this tile as well. Next we have Hounds, and we already have a Hound token on the board, so we move that Hound token one space towards the closest worker, ignoring any that are in the City of Kings. The one advantage for us is that the hounds are way over here, so they'll take one step. The closest worker is right here. The final ability is Panic, and this one is not fun. All heroes within range of the creature draw one position card each and move to the marked spot. Each hero travels through every map tile on their way, taking damage from fire and poisoning as they travel through. 
It's important to note that if the panic causes a hero to go from an unexplored tile to another unexplored tile, they stop moving on the first unexplored tile. Our first card will be for Thralir. And one, one, two, one, two. We definitely can do that. We're going to have to move Thralir all the way over here. And now for Sashara. And we have one, two, one. Yep, we can do that. So she'll move all the way over to here. She'll move from the Moon Lake all the way down to the City of Kings, which actually is really nice because she'll fully heal. I didn't even realize that till I started moving her. That is awesome. Something that I'm not entirely sure about. I know that if you move through a tile that has a fire token on it, you're going to take one damage. But this poison says if ever you're on a tile that has a poison token, you immediately get poisoned. And you actually remove this and place it on your character sheet. Does that happen right away? So I should have put that on one of my heroes right away before resolving the next step? I don't know. Because now I would say I just put it on Sashara. Because the moment she went back to the City of Kings, she'd clean it off. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here because it's going to be a hindrance for us going forward. So let's just leave it there. Sorry if I did that wrong. I'll make sure to make a note. I think our plan for Thralir is to go a little bit kamikaze here. <laughs> We're going to attack twice, which will actually defeat Thralir. He'll come back to the City of Kings. We'll lose one morale. But that way we can do six more points of damage to Hakia. The reason we're going to be able to attack twice is because the reflect happens at the end of the attack phase. And so we'll be able to do two attacks, but at the end of that second attack, we'll go below one health. Five damage minus two is three. One, two, three. And we'll draw an ability token. And we have, oh, finally we have a move. Thank goodness. And then we'll do another three points of damage. One, two, three. Three, so we're at a total of 10 health, and we have Temptation. Oh my gosh, so many abilities. Doing that, though, is going to reduce our health to 1 and then back to 0. So what happens is, is we'll get rushed back to the City of Kings, we'll go to full health, we'd remove any impairments, but we lose 1 morale. I forgot to show you that we're going to be placing both of these right here. Thralir will be rushed back right to here, and we'll lose one morale. Our next actions will be Thralir taking a move action, and our worker number two taking a move action. I'm going to move Thralir over here to this ore space, just in case Hakia will get into range of him being here. He can do eight points of damage. <laughs> and then this worker will run back to the City of Kings and drop off all of its goodies. We'll add two item parts, two pieces of wood, one ore, and one fish. Our final action will be to simply move worker number one out of the City of Kings. We'll move this worker all the way over to Oslin's way because they have two movement. We're going to have some fun here with Sashara. Sashara has a total movement of three, which is perfect. She's going to do a move action. She's then going to attack twice and then do her special action to heal herself. She'll run all the way over to the Astrographer's Tower. She's in a range two, and she's gonna hit Hakia twice. We'll do four damage plus 50%, four, uh, 50 of four is two, so that's six damage for the first hit, and four plus one is five. Five on one and six on the other, yeah! Six minus two is four, so four points of damage puts a Kia down to six health. Then we'll draw another easy ability, and we have another move. So whenever you have the same ability, you stack them on top, and they don't add anything additional for that enemy or creature. So that's pretty good. Then we did five damage. Minus two is three. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> we're so close. I wish this boss, Hakia, would not heal, because at the end of, or at the beginning of the next round, She'll be back to five health. And she gets another ability token. And let's see. She grabbed another move. Awesome. So just add in some moves. Hakia will go down by four health. One, two, three, four. But then goes all the way back up to full health because she used her special. For our final action, we're going to do a shot in the dark and have a worker number two do a work action and drop this trap. Because you just never know. They might move through it. 
This trap does 12 points of damage if we can have Hakia walk through here. That'll totally take her out. Hakia is down to three health, but has tons of different actions. Let's see if we can survive another round and take her out. We've now finished late morning. Let's go to midday. And this is the first time this icon will take effect. Any poison that's on the board will be reduced by one. So if there's strong poison, it'll move to the weak side. If there's weak poison, it'll be removed from the board. Here in the Moon Lake, where future Colin already told you about the fact that this should have been on a character, we'll just remove it from the board now. Next, we're going to activate Hakia, and this is going to hurt. I think we're going to have to say that Sashara is going to get killed here. So we're going to move up by two health because of the two heal stat, and then Hakia is going to attack Sashara for six damage. We definitely can soak the six. We'll only go down to two damage, but now with the poison and the fire, and when we activate both of them immediately, yeah, she's going to go down to zero health. Let's activate Fire Bolt, Poison Bolt, and Hounds all at the same time, because we already know how those will work. We'll place a Fire Token and a Poison Token where Sashara is, and then we'll move the Hounds towards a Worker. We'll place both of these here on Sashara's tile, and then this Poison's going to go right onto Sashara's uh, character sheet, but this Fire will stay here and she'll take a point of damage. She'll move down for one health, and then we'll place this poison here. And at the beginning of her turn, she is going to be <laughs> having poison and then she'll unfortunately be killed. This hound will then move one step towards Sashara's worker right here. The next ability is Temptation. And that says that all workers within range of the creature move one map tile towards the creature, even if they were already trapped. And then lastly, we'll do Panic, which should only affect Sashara. And then the move, which will affect Hakia. So Shara's worker is going to get pulled in with the hounds here, and now it's probably hiding and can't be used till we get rid of that hound token. And then we'll flip the next movement card for Sashara. So Sashara can't go up this way, but she can go down over here. That's going to move her into the Cripple Wood Canyons. Now Hakia is going to move. And the Hakia is going to go... Nope, can't go up. So Hakia will move down, over, and down. Looks like Hakia knows she's in a little bit of danger with not a lot of health, so she's going to run over here to the oak wood. Well, I was certain that Sashara was going to die, but I don't think we have to have that happen because Thrillier can heal her. So what Thrillier is going to do is take one move action. He's going to heal uh, Sashara and then attack Hakia. Thrillier will move over here to the Lost Hope, and then he'll heal Sashara and do five points of damage to Hakia. His heal stat is only two, but that's just enough to keep her alive. <laughs> that means Hakia will lose three health, going down to two, and then gains another green ability, and we have tracking. Boy, just so many abilities. That also means Thrillier will take two points of damage, but eh, that didn't even touch him. Our last two actions are going to be to have our worker move and then do a little scavenging. Our worker will run into the crippled canyons and we'll roll five dice to see what we can find. Here we go. Nice, more item parts, some ore, some wood, and only one attention token. We'll place the attention token right here. Here are four goodies, nice. For Sashara, the first thing that she is gonna do is take one point of damage due to the poison. She is then going to do her special action to heal herself by five. Then she's going to do an attack action to take out that hound, do a move action to get in range of Hakia, and take out Hakia. Five health is perfect, just enough to get her back up to seven. Taking out this hound means that her worker will no longer be terrified. Sashara will then move into the Inn of the Last Hope and do a minimum of two points of damage, and that will take out Hakia. She'll have to lose two health because of it, but I'd say it's worth it. Hakia is no more, and we just gained one, two, three XP. After doing all of that, we didn't even level up. <laughs> her final action will be to move worker number two. We'll move her back over here to this ore location. Well, and that's that. We just completed the story quest. Our reward for completing our objective is you win. You may stop now or continue playing to attempt the heroic challenge the parchment so i asked before if everyone wanted me to keep going and i got a bunch of people saying yes so 
I don't want to take this off the table either, <laughs> but I want to make that decision of, well, do I want to move to story two or do you guys just want to see story one continue? If we did story two, I'd pick new heroes so you guys could see those heroes, but then it's going to uh, spoil a little bit more of the story. But if we stay with story quest one or story one, you'd be able to see how the heroes can level up a little more, see some more difficult enemies. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'll give it about one to two days. Just tell me in the comments and I'll tally them up. And then the next video, I'll let you know which way we're going to go. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you at the next stop.